So welcome to this video about the nth term rule, finding the nth term rule about this particular sequence. And this question was asked to me on, uh, by one of you on my website, explainingmaths.com. Yeah, so please go to my website and check out all the free resources you'll find there. Now, looking at this uh, sequence, you notice that it's not like a constant addition between the terms. Yeah? Because I'm quite sure that uh, if we, for instance, have um, 5, 7, 9, yeah, so a different term, if we have this term, you would notice, well, the term-to-term -term rule uh, is plus 2. So to find the end of term rule of that particular sequence, you would do 2n, yeah, because the terms and term rule is plus 2, so 2n. And you look at the first term, is it 2? No, it's 5. So to get 5, I have to uh, plus it by 3. So that would be the nth term rule for that particular sequence. And you can check that always. Uh, let's do term 4. So 2 times 4, 8 plus 3 is 11. 1, 2, 3, 4. Indeed, it is 11. Uh, a different sequence, if I, for instance, have... Um, 3, 9, oh, there we go, 27, uh, what is it, 60, 81, uh, then to find the nth term rule, well, you would notice plus 6, but that is not plus 6, that's not definitely not plus 6, so there's not a constant addition, uh, however, there is a constant multiplication, so it's a geometric sequence, yeah, so that is times 3, hopefully you notice that, times 3, and that one is times 3. And to find the end of term rule of a geometric sequence, we take the first term, yeah, which is a 3. So please don't confuse that with this 3. Now we take the first term. I should have picked a different example. I do apologize. So 3 times the ratio, yeah, the term to term multiplication, if you like, which is 3 to the power n minus 1. And I explain in one of my other videos why. Anyway, that's a geometric sequence. This is a linear arithmetic sequence. They are quite straightforward, but that is not what is going on here. There's not a constant multiplication or a constant addition. And how do we find the nth term rule? Now, um, let's have a look uh, what's going on, because this is plus 9, and that is plus 15. So as you can see, it's different. What is that? Plus 21. And this is plus 27. Okay. And uh, it's not a constant addition, so we're going to continue to see what is the difference between 9 and 15. And that is a difference of 6, yeah? plus 6. And then we notice that between 15 and 21, again it's plus 6. And from 21 to 27, again it's plus 6. And because in our second line we have a condition... Um, um, a constant addition, we know we're talking about a quadratic rule to describe the nth term. Okay, so it's a quadratic. If we had to continue another row, so three rows, it would have been a cubic rule. Now, in one of my other videos, and I'll try to embed it in this video, um, I show you with more algebra involved how you can exactly and always find the nth term rule in these cases. But I just want to tell you, you know it's going to be a quadratic um, a, quad, a, quad, a quadratic expression now. So what are the square numbers? Yeah, so do you know what the square numbers are? You should know what well, the first square number is 1, the second square number is 4, and then we have 9, 16, 25, all square numbers. And what I want you to do, knowing that we're talking about a square sequence, a square addition somehow, I want you to write those square numbers on top of the terms and then see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to write down uh, the 1 here, oh, let me put a circle here, what is the next square number? 2 times 2 is 4, and 9, 16, and 25. And then you look at the relationship between the square number and the actual sequence. And then you just try to find some sort of relationship. Now, the square number 1 for term 1, that could be times 4, but 4 times 4 is not 13, and 9 times 4 is not 28, so that's not the case. But perhaps you want to look at the biggest number first. 25, how can I go from 25 to 76? Yeah. Well, I know that 3 times 25 is 75, so plus 1. So I'm just going to write that down. So 3 times that square number, so 3 times n squared is 75, and then plus 1 is going to give me 76, because this is the square number 5 squared for term 5, yeah? so n squared for term 5 
times 3 plus 1 is going to give me 76. Now let's have a look if that is the same for the following number eh? uh, before it, 49. So 4 squared for term 4 is 16. 16 times 3 is 30, is 48, plus 1, indeed 49. Um, for the first one, 1 squared is 1, times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So check my other video for a more official way to find these end of term rules for quadratic sequences. However, this always works. You're not going to get the most difficult one on your IGCSE exam. So you got to determine it's a, it's a quadratic rule you're trying to find. Write down those square numbers on top of your terms, term 1, term 2, term 3, term 4, term 5, and then look for a particular relationship. Please realize, by the way, that, that is already n squared. Okay, so we're talking about n squared. It's a quadratic expression. Times it by 3 plus 1 to get 76, and then you notice that is the case for all those terms. So that would be your final answer. Well, hopefully that was useful. Um, like and share it, please, if it was. And I wish you a very pleasant day. Bye-bye.